Here's a quick tutorial on how to do a motor record and playback. First I'll show conceptually how it works, then we'll show some code and then a demonstration. So conceptually there's two parts of course, the record part and the playback part. Both are going to use a, in this case, a for loop to accomplish this. So the record part, we'll use a for loop, we're going to run it five times, arbitrary number, just to record five different values. The values are going to be stored in an array, so we're actually going to use an array constant and we're going to make it an int. <clears throat> that array constant is going to be pushed into the for loop, we're of course going to want to re remember the values, so we'll use a shift register at the input terminal and output terminal of the for loop. Within the for loop, what we're going to want to do, in essence, is read the motor and take that value and insert it into the array. So each time through the loop it's going to read the motor value and insert it into the array and at the end the array will contain five motor values. Of course there's some other details in terms of when to read and to pause it. If, if we just had this it would loop very quickly through reading five values. So once that comes out we will then send that array of five values and we'll pass that into a second for loop to actually do the playback. Now for the second for loop we actually don't have to wire in the number, although we certainly could, because we can use indexing on the for loop in order to automatically loop the number of times based on this array size. So since there's five elements in the array, we know this because we recorded five values, it will then loop five times. And this here will actually be an array, so it'll be a thicker wire. What comes out will actually be individual values within the array. And so what do we want to do here? First we want to of course start our motors, then we're going to wait for rotation, and then we will stop. And the wait for rotation is going to go for the amount recorded. Now of course there's also here some other details especially in terms of which direction the motor should turn. This is because when you read the motor it might have been a positive value or a negative value and based on that we want to make sure we're going in the right direction. So now let's actually look at what this would look like in LabVIEW code. There's a lot of code here and it's kind of small but I'll just run through this briefly. Again we have our record loop and our playback loop. The record loop is going to run five times and here's the blank array constant that's wired into the shift register. We're using some display pieces, we're resetting the rotation and then we're waiting for a touch sensor on port 1. When the touch sensor is pressed that's our indication that we should read the rotation and then that gets stored into that array using the insert into the array of values there. We play a tone, this uh, just allows us to know that we have uh, recorded the value as well as it puts a little bit of a delay in this loop so that when it loops back around uh, it waits again for another uh, press. Once it's recorded five times we play a higher tone to indicate that we're done, we reset the rotations and then we do some more display. Now it's time for the playback. Again the N is not wired because we're using the indexing on the array here. And this is a thicker blue line that comes in, that's the array, and this peels off each time the loop runs a different value of that. Comes out, we display it on the screen, and then we drive the motors forward, wait until the rotation, stop and play a tone. Now what we've done here when we drive the motor is a little bit of tricky math. We're actually looking at the sign of the value, so if it's positive, I want to drive the motor forward, and if it's negative, I want to drive the motor backwards. To accomplish this, I take the sign, plus one or minus one, and multiply it by the power. 
And so if it's minus 1, this will drive it backwards at negative 20. If it's positive, it'll drive it forward at 20. So then I'm going to wait for the motor to spin. Once it's spit, spun the correct amount as recorded, I will then stop and play the tone. And then finally, here's a demonstration of this in action. Here we have our EV3. It has a touch sensor connected to uh, port 1, and it has a motor connected to uh, port A. So if I run this program, the program starts. It's just sitting here waiting for uh, the touch sensor to be pressed. What I will do is I will rotate the motor uh, half a turn and press. I will rotate it half a turn back and press the beep indicating that we've recorded. I'll rotate it half a full turn forward, a full turn back, and maybe end with another half turn. No, nope, I'll end with a full turn. All right, so let's see. Uh, when I press this, this will be the fifth time that we've recorded, and it will do the playback. Half turn forward, half turn back, full turn forward, full turn back, and then a full turn forward. 